Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be making a bigger knife than I had before. I'm going to be making a machete. Um, I'm going to be using stock removal and I'm going to be forging some of it as well. My forge is only about 8 inches long and this is going to be a 22 inch knife. Um, so that'd be a little too much to do in my forge. Just lots of reheating and you know, eventually I'll get a bigger forge where I can make a knife this big. So I just I already drew it up a shape and just removing as much of the cam to the angle grinder just so I get a basic shape that I can go and uh, go to the grinder and just rough it out a little bit more. I just kind of go around all the edges, try to get to my marker lines. And I use a smaller 1x30 grinder just to get any of the circular shapes on it. Makes it a little bit easier. Alright, and then at this point it was looking more like a sack, so I went to the forge and just started rounding it more so it looked more like a machete. back to the grinder and just kind of finished up the shape that I want. I wanted to have a little bit more of a curve in it. And then I used a 36 grit belt just to you know, grind in my bevels and there's a lot of black marks I need to remove more steel just to take those out. And this, since this plate was so long, I just made a little, little jig just to help the size of the blade. So I, I tried annealing the blade. You can see there's a big warp in the blade. And what I did is I left it in the forge, yeah, to cool really slowly. But the problem was my forge is so small that some of it was inside the forest, some of it was outside, so it cooled at different temperatures, making the warp. So I thought if I just sandwich it between two pieces of steel, put something heavy on top, that it should straighten it back out. So this helped with most of it, most of the warp. There's still a little bit, so I went to my vise and tried to get a little bit more of it out. I got just about all of it. There's just a little bit, but I can fix that with a little bit of grinding because there's still more steel to remove. That's not too bad. So then I went and drilled my, uh, my main pin holes. And these work a lot easier if you start on a s slow speed. I use the slowest speed that I can. It takes a little bit of time, but it works pretty well. You just add a little bit of motor oil, help cool it down. All right, so now I'm heating up a piece of steel along with my blade. Yeah, heat up my quench oil. I like to have my oil when I quench at about 130 degrees and right now it's around 200 degrees right after I use that piece of steel to heat it up and I found if I start at 200 degrees by the time I've done my thermal cycling on my blade it'll be about 130 right where I want it so the thermal cycling where you heat the blade up to non-magnetic and, and then you let it cool back to a black color. And I'll do this two times and the third time I'll quench and this just removes a lot of the stress from the blade so you get less of a chance that it's going to warp. 
And here I'm just testing to see if the file skates over the blade. So it skates over, sounds like a glassy sound, doesn't catch, doesn't grab onto the blade at all. You know you have a hard blade. And after that I temper it in the oven. So I did um, two two hour cycles at 450 degrees. And this is 1095 steel. And I found that gives a really good temper on the blade. So I forgot to drill the rest of the holes in my handle, so I had to do it after I hardened the blade. And this was a pain because the blade's already been hardened, so it just takes more time to get through with the drill press. Uh, and after after you drill it, you kind of have a little bit of steel sticking out the other side, so I just went on the grinder and smoothed it out. Now if you don't do this, your scales aren't going to fit how you want them. So here I'm just marking where I want my scales. I'm using uh, black linen micarta for this. So I just clamp everything together so there's no way it's going to be able to move and get good even holes. And then I switch to a 220 grit belt and just clean up my blade. And here's a gator belt, which is around 400 grit. And I decided I was going to try uh, to do a patina. So I'm using apple cider vinegar. So the patina helps against rust. Um, and when you're cutting certain foods, like meats and certain fruits and vegetables that have acids in them, yeah, this will help so it doesn't discolor the blade. Stainless steel, you don't have to worry about it, but with high carbon steel, like this one, you know, it's a good idea. So I just let this sit for about eight hours. turns a nice gray color uh, and you can do multiple soaks of it if you want and here I'm just I like to do test fits on my scales to make sure everything's gonna go together how I want I'm cleaning up the scales that view you can use rubbing alcohol I just use some Windex to clean it and just gives it a better hold and I also roughed it up with some sandpaper just gives the epoxy something to stick to. Now on this one, I use an epoxy that I have about half an hour before it really starts hardening. I've used the five minute epoxies, but I'd, it's a lot nicer to have more time to work with it. So you don't have to worry, take your time. And I just like clean up the epoxy, so as I'm doing it, I use a little bit too much so it kind of runs out. So I just cleaned it up. I put as many clamps on as I can fit. And I let it sit for about 36 hours. All right, when it's all dry, go and cut off the pins. And I grind them down until they're flush with the rest of the handle. This is kind of how it looks after I've got my shape, ground everything down to how I want it. Now I just need to uh, sand shape a little bit more with sandpaper. Mm -hmm. So I start with a 150 grit sandpaper and I work my way up to 2000 grit. So I wanted to try some boiled linseed oil. Usually use that for wood. I always wanted to see what it would do to micarta. It shined it up real nice. And I just gave final edge, so I used a 220 grit belt, and then I also did a gator belt. I wanted to do a little bit of testing, so I just did some bottle chops. Alright, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know if you liked more of a, this tutorial type video.
Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.